Dean, Barnet 3, Eastleigh 1. Great result on a bank holiday Monday. Opening stages, I'm sure you'll agree, were a bit close and tense, but then your team really took the, the game by the scruff of the neck. What are your thoughts on that performance? I don't think we played particularly great. I just sort of said that there on, on live television. I didn't think we were good today, I'll be honest with you. We lacked the speed, we lacked athleticism. We were good in the sense of um, in togetherness, in character, um, in commitment. Um, but our quality at times wasn't great and realistically we, after the first 20 minutes we took a bit of an onslaught from Eastley and they probably deserved to take the lead. We changed things tactically slightly in midfield. We went sort of two eights rather than sitting two and we got hold of the game then. We played a bit better and we scored some really good goals. So our individual qualities probably won us the game today and our togetherness to make sure we keep the ball out of our net. Absolutely and obviously that result, disappointing result against Chesterfield on Friday night. You say that we didn't play well, but sometimes you don't play completely brilliantly throughout the entire season. You must be proud of the way that we bounced back from that, that defeat. Yeah, that's the big word. Well, the big couple of words, bouncing back. So, you know, I said that to you today, good teams, you know, when they get defeated, they bounce back with a victory. So we've, we've sort of got over the first hurdle of the first six games and we've got 40 games left. So there's a long way to go, but we have to enjoy it when we're in this period of time because, you know, this, this game can change very, very quickly. This time last week, we had everyone available for selection. And today we've got no Danny Collins, um, no Ryan de Havilland, and obviously our star man's moved on. So, and Jamal Lozo was available as well this time last week. So it shows you how quick this business can change. So we're going to have to recruit a couple of players in. That's the next priority for us. Um, we need to get more speed in our group, um, and the players know that. I spoke to them yesterday about it. But the players today, credit to themselves and their families. You know what I mean? They gave their all, and we gave our supporters something to sing about. And our supporters have been unbelievable. With us the togetherness they've shown. And, it felt like a real game today. It's the first time I've been at the Hive and that felt like a proper game of football. You know, I thought it was a good good decision by the chairman to let the supporters in down here, down the bottom. It just felt right. And uh, our players, like I say, gave our supporters something to cheer about and I hope they enjoy that Monday evening. For sure. Can you give us a bit more information on uh, those two injuries that were that have come in the last couple of days, De Havilland and Colin? So Collins, there was a collision with Winter in the late in the game at Chesterfield and he's got bruised ribs. Um, they're not cracked, which is good, very positive. He had an x-ray on Saturday evening. Um, and Ryan de Havilland's just got a little nick in his groin and I just didn't want to worsen it because he's, he's such a big player for us. Um, so we made a decision just to leave him out today. Fully understand. Now let's have a little look into that game. Uh, Sean Shields with an absolutely unbelievable solo run. What did you make of the goal and two and two for Shields? Must be delighted. Yeah, our front three have got to contribute towards goals and Shields has been involved. I think he's set up two or three already and he scored a couple, so he's part of that front three and he's got the capabilities doing that, but I thought he's walk right without the ball defensively. That's what we're asking. First and foremost, that's what we ask of our players. Uh, the way he showed um, the full-back down the outside was good as well, so it's something we've been working on with our wide forwards and uh, yeah, the key bit is, I suppose, is the goal. What a goal. Fantastic goal. Good little fit. I think Pritch fed it, fed, uh, fed it, got the second, fed it out wide and dropped his shoulder a couple of, couple of feints and reversed it in the corner. Fantastic finish. Delighted for him. Absolutely. Dale Gorman really dictated some of the play in that midfield. Rightly so, got man of the match from, from the National League. It was a real captain's performance from him today. Yeah, Gormo, he's a proper leader, great character, um, technically excellent. And he's got that in his locker, you know, we've been asking him to dictate games more. I thought we could, when we're 3-0 up, I think we can dictate the game more, really pass the ball and enjoy the being 3-0 up. You know, I understand that, you know, uh, Eastley have gone and put four up front and tried to get loads of width and sort of, in a way, they've had a cheat up, but I'd like to see us enjoy the game a little bit more. I must touch upon Rob Hull's brilliant goals. It was superb. It'll be on the highlights reel for the next year, I'm sure. What do you make of Hull's performance overall? Yeah, Harley, we had a... A frank chat yesterday about him performing to the levels we know he's capable of and to be fair he's responded brilliantly you know I say the front three have to be involved in goals and he was today what a finish he's watched it out of the sky technically brilliant and uh, it's as clean as you can hit it and it's come up it's come a long way out of the sky so like you said Aaron McLean was just saying to me there basically that if that was in the Premier League everyone would be raving about it. Sam Maximan scored one yesterday so uh, you know, tip your hat to that. What a great goal. A special moment. Now, we must touch upon Eastleigh. They scored in the 84th minute. We spoke a little bit earlier about how they scored all their goals, I think, this season from set pieces. Are you disappointed um, about conceding from a set piece, especially as I know that you have been planning against them and how to defend them? Yeah, when you make changes like we have, um, the Beardy's just lost his man, to be totally honest with you, and he's nodded it in. They had a lot of corners today. We had a lot to deal with, really. Um, it's not ideal playing Jerome McKeemo on the right-hand side with Musa sort of obviously in this slot 
two lefties. So it's something we're going to have to look at. We're going to have to make sure that we probably go and sign another player in that department, if I'm being totally honest. But uh, we've a lot, of, like I say, they've scored a lot in set pieces. The set pieces are good. They pinned the goalie really well and they've got around the squad. And sometimes you've just got to like, tip your hat to that as well. So. It, it is what it is. Uh, we won't go too crazy about it. I must just very quickly touch upon Marvin Armstrong. Obviously, made his debut for the Beast today. Were you impressed by the the moments he had on the pitch today? His speed. I've never seen speed like his speed covering the ground in the midfield. He played a different role for his last club in, in Ward, and he played sitting. They play more technical. They play a sort of overload. They play a four-two-four system. But we want to play him more as an eight and get around the pitch and show us that speed and that quality. Type was tidy when he got in possession. Um, and it's hard to come on, but it's nice for him as well to make his debut live on BT Sport. So I'm delighted for him and his family. He should be proud. Now we go to Oldershot on Saturday. You've got a few days off, which I'm sure you'll be delighted uh, to have a little bit of time with the family. What are you thinking that Oldershot are going to be producing and what are they going to be um, bringing out of your team that you didn't necessarily see today? Very technical side, Oldershot. Um, manager looks to play technical way. So... Um, I don't know how they got on today, to be honest with you. Uh, I know they played Maidstone, I think, so I'll get the scout and report and watch their games back. And The first thing we've got to do is enjoy today, if I'm being honest with you, Don. Well, I like to enjoy the evening um, after a long, hard week. It's been a long, hard week, and then we'll focus on them come tomorrow. The lads have two days off. They deserve it. Um, we set them a points target um, at the start of the season for this month. We asked them could they get 12 points, they've managed to get 14, so I said I'll give you two days off, so they'll have two days off, we're back in again Thursday, and back to the grind, looking forward to Saturday. Dino, have a good evening, up the bees.